Hey guys, and welcome back to Jim's Garage. One of the questions that my community are continuously asking me is how do I route a container through a VPN? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy a VPN container that will connect to pretty much any of the big VPN suppliers. And if it doesn't support it out of the box, it is supported through templating. I'm gonna show you how to do this with NordVPN, but there are instructions for all of the big players. Importantly, on top of this, it supports WireGuard. So not only does it support the more familiar UDP and TCP based VPNs, but also WireGuard, which as I showed in my last video, has pretty much become the de facto standard for VPNs. It's lightweight, it's fast, it's baked into the kernel, and it has all the benefits of modern cryptography. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy a torrent stack, more commonly known as an R stack. This will include Qubit Torrent, Prowler, Sonar, and I've included Jacket if you're still using Jacket. The beauty of this approach is that we're simply defining how to route this traffic with a simple network command in the Docker Compose file. And that'll give you a clue as to how we're gonna deploy this. But the key thing here is that the principle for deploying a container through a VPN is the same. So if you don't want to do this for a torrent, you could do this for any container you are running on your network. Moreover, some of your VPN providers might actually allow port forwarding. So that opens up the interesting possibility that you could expose your services through a VPN, which is great not only for hiding your location, but equally, maybe your ISP is blocking port forwarding, and this could allow you to get around that. So you might be thinking, how can we do this simply in virtually one click? Well, that's where our good old friend Docker comes to the rescue again. And we can actually spin up multiple services within one Docker Compose file. So let's have a look. The primary thing here we're gonna use is a container called Gluton. I recommend you go and check that out, give it a star. It's a great container that works with pretty much all of the main VPN providers. Now you might be asking, how does this work? Well, again, that's where the magic of Docker networking comes in. What we're doing here is effectively spinning up four containers. One of those is that Gluton, the one that provides the VPN, and the other ones, Sonar and Jacket, they are routed through that container simply by specifying the Gluton as the network access point. In this case, the network mode service Gluton. So with this setup, all of those containers are on the same Docker network and can communicate with one another and are still accessible locally. Sounds like a pretty good solution. So let's run through each of the containers quickly to make sure that we understand the configuration. So the first one is Gluton and there's not really much to go through here. We need to add NetAdmin for the capability add. It needs special network permissions to be able to set up and share this VPN. We need to pass through the device, network ton. We need to specify some ports. Now, as you can see, I've added comments here for each of the ports and which service they relate to. You could obviously add to this Docker Compose file for any other container you want to run through a VPN. Simply add the ports to this container and then redeploy it. You can then access it through the IP of the Docker VM and that port number. Or you could run it through traffic like we have done before and take advantage of a friendly, easy to remember URL. The volume mounts for this container are pretty straightforward. This is where it's gonna store the server list for your chosen VPN, i.e. I'm using NordVPN for this example. And this is where it will store all the details for all of the NordVPN servers. The most important bit in this container is the environment section. So in the environment section, you can choose which VPN provider you want to use, which type of VPN, i.e. WireGuard, UDP, TCP, etc., and then some credentials to allow you to access it with your account. I've got this configured for WireGuard, but don't worry, if your provider doesn't give you WireGuard credentials, you can choose one of the other protocols, or I'll show you in a minute how to get WireGuard credentials for NordVPN because it's not straightforward. They want to force you to use NordLinks, which is basically their proprietary implementation of WireGuard. 
The next container is qubit torrent. Now you could change this for any torrent client you want to use, deluge, transmission, just change this. The key thing here, remember, we want to specify the network mode as service gluton. As long as you've got that, and as long as you're mapping the ports okay, you should be fine. So qubit torrent's pretty straightforward. We basically just need to specify where we want the config to live for qubit torrent and where we want our downloads to reside. Now, I've just mapped these locally, but if you remember in a previous video, I showed you how to map a network drive from TrueNAS. Now, it might be a good idea to save all of that to your TrueNAS because it likely has larger storage, or maybe you want to keep it locally because you don't want your NAS getting hit by torrents, which are usually pretty read-write heavy. The next container we're using here is Jacket, and that's pretty straightforward. Nothing special about this. We just need to specify where we want the config and the black hole folder to be located. So just map those to the right location for your setup. And lastly is Sonar. Again, really simple to deploy. Just change those volume mounts to wherever you need them to be. So let's head over to our Docker VM now. Let's create that compose file and the folders that are necessary to deploy this container stack. So I've created in my Docker compose folder the Docker Compose, which you can find on my GitHub. Inside here, I've tweaked this to match my setup using NordVPN and WireGuard, and I've mapped all of the home directories to my user. As I said, you can add as many containers in here as you want, and you can route those all through the VPN. So once you've created your Docker Compose file, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those folder structures exist for when you start the container. And you can see that I have these folders created already. So let's go ahead and start this and see what happens. So if we log into our host, let's navigate to our Docker Compose location. And then we simply wanna deploy this using the sudo docker compose up dash D. So that's gonna go ahead, pull down all of those containers, and hopefully you should now be up and running. Let's go and have a quick look in Portainer to make sure that those all deployed successfully. We could also do docker ps and just make sure in the command line. So those all look like they're running. And we can see here, if we focus on the stack column, that our R stack is up and running and is in a healthy state. Excellent. So if we wanna just double check, let's head into the gluton logs and just make sure that everything looks right. Because if we don't have that VPN connection, then none of this is gonna work. So as you can see, Everything is up and running. We've got the, you are running on the bleeding edge of latest and your public IP address is, I'm coming out somewhere in Poland. So that looks great. I'm not in Poland. Let's check the other containers. Everything looks fine in there. Jacket looks good. It's listening on the port that we told it to. And lastly, our torrent client is also running as well. So let's go and verify that in the browser just to make sure. So I've kept this simple without a traffic reverse proxy. So I'm gonna be connecting with the IP address and the port, so my Docker machine and the ports we specified. But this is just as simple to add the traffic labels and run it through traffic with a friendly URL if you want. So according to our Docker Compose file and the port that we can see that Gluton has assigned to it, we should be able to access Qubit Torrent on port 8085 or whatever URL you've given it with traffic. Let's check that out. And there we go, blinded by the lack of dark mode, but we've got the Qubit Torrent web UI. Excellent. And if we log in with the default username of admin and the password of admin admin, yep, goes without saying, I recommend you change those. We have the familiar Qubit Torrent UI. Perfect. Yeah, it's running through a browser. That's pretty cool. So now that you're able to access Qubit Torrent, it should be the same process for all of the other services that you're running. So simply head to things like Prowler or Sonar and then connect the apps together using the local host name and the port. Everything should behave and act as if you're running the own specific dedicated applications. So thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.